The world is quite literally everything. And so whatever you say about the world, whatever claim you make about the world, you will be right. And this is really difficult to integrate. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been feeling like a crank, like a conspiracy theorist, um, you know, and just briefly, like, I just want to outline this. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to prescribe what anyone else should do. If you want a vaccine, take it. Like, I, I, I just don't want it. It doesn't seem that good and the disease doesn't seem that dangerous. I don't want it. And it just, I'm quite shocked that that's apparently a controversial decision. Um, and, I, and watching the redefinition of the word vaccine and anti-vax does make me uncomfortable. And the fact that apparently this is a dangerous idea and an idea that needs to be suppressed, like my decision that it's, it puts me in a camp of somehow someone chaotic and dangerous and anti-establishment, like that, that's what I find freaky. But it's really clear to me that um, I've been overcompensating. Um, like for my own naivety up until very recently. Like COVID really knocked me out of my shell. You know, I thought I was a critic of everything. <laughs> I, I, I really was laughing as a edgelord or, or a lefty or something. I don't know what I was doing. But, you know, I am so privileged and lucky. And I'm very grateful for all that I've got and for the society I complain about. Like, you know, life is a paradox. You know, I can't live in the jungle. Civilization isn't all bad. Um, and I feel like I've implied too much that it is. And, you know, like I... Like, until COVID, until suddenly I found myself contradicted and, and sort of eliminated by the media and society at large, and that my voice was painted as, was misrepresented as, like, this ex all these extreme stuff that I'm not saying. Like, until that happened to me, until I was sort of made into a persona non grata for my ideas, <laughs> you know, I went along with everything. I wasn't really. It was like... I. I can't claim any moral virtue in my criticism because, you know, I didn't speak up until they came for me. I mean, yeah, I've always been, had sort of leftish ideas and stuff, but I never really risked anything for them until, you know, I got locked down and had sort of rights taken away for not getting vaxxed. Um, you know, like the Australian Aborigines, for example, you know, they kind of felt the system pretty harshly much earlier and have much more legitimate complaints than I've got. So, yeah, I feel like I just want to say this. And it's really tricky because, like, I'm not taking anything back I've said. Like, I am very frightened of society. Like, and it's sort of, like, it wants our soul. There's this sense in which it wants, society wants our soul. And it frightens me because it's getting more and more powerful and in, in the individual seems to be getting weaker. But, you know, I can't live without it. And it gives me great gifts. And it's it's... You know, to this day, it continues to treat me well. You know, like I, you know, I might have had my voice suppressed. I might have been mocked by, you know, the masses, I suppose. But it's not like I've been imprisoned or like really fundamentally um, experienced any, you know, really serious sanctions. Um, so, yeah, I am grateful. And... It's strange, you know, because I, I'm really optimistic about life, but not so much about civilization. But I shouldn't imply civilization is all terrible. It's not. You know, the ancient um, savage, and I use that word savage because for the civilized person, the modern person, to live in the wild without power or devices is savage. And it's something about that old word that's really honest. I mean, we even use savage as a positive word now, right? The kids do. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the ancient indigenous tribe 
they didn't live in harmony with nature out of some greater moral quality. They just couldn't conceive of anything else. I mean, they, they are trapped in a kind of transference and projection. They cannot see themselves as separate from nature. They, they are literally unconscious in a way that we actually don't really understand anymore um, because of how well conscious we are. Like, you know, like we don't, I mean, if, if people feel like I'm being mean here, because I'm going down a bit of a, a, a side street here, but you just have to look at the superstitions in, in primitive society, you know, what people get killed for and what people can and can't do and how things are explained. I mean, you know, you get stories about, you know, the English colonists in, in Africa and, you know, like, you know, people giving up trying to escape from a British prison because the crocodiles ate them and they feel like the, the crocodiles have joined forces with the English, right? This is, this is how the more animistic mind works. Um, so civilization seems like it's really hard to identify the golden sort of light in civilization, the, 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 its own ideals, because it seems to just amplify power. But there's something there. There is something there. There is really no higher consciousness without it. Um, and I, I've been a bit harsh on civilization, so I just, I just want to say that. Um, I, I guess I've said all I want to say. It's, it's hard to talk about this stuff. But I just don't, I mean, I, I do want to talk about history and politics, and I, I have a lot of insight into it. Like, I really do. But that, that actually means I have a greater responsibility to speak cautiously. Because these problems, the historical problems I'm particularly interested in, wars and things like this, they're so dangerous that almost nobody can talk about them in a way that improves the problem. And I do not have the peace in my heart to do that. As cautious as I've been, given the strength of my statements, I don't feel like I've done tremendous good. You know, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not taking anything back or pulling anything down, but, you know, it's really clear to me. I used to love talking about this stuff out of a desire to sort of be edgy um, or to show off my intelligence, God help me. Um, but these days it's more a realization that what my ego is doing here is there's a part of me that doesn't want to learn, doesn't want to see myself or change. And, you know, if I focus all my analysis on problems that are beyond me, that I have no authority over or, or direct responsibility for, and, and that, you know, are, you know, I might as well talk about the weather, um, you know, <laughs> then I'm not likely to be transformed. Although it's interesting, I've... I'm really grateful to people like my brother and Vlad Vexler for standing in and replying to me and not um, overly demonising me. It's been really helpful. Um, you know, and I have a lot of disagreements there, but, um, yeah, I'm going to do work on myself and I'm going to talk. You know, I talked about this before I, and I'll, I'll return to it. You know, I'm going to talk, return to more personal problems. I really want to talk about politics and history, but... Um, I, I don't need to. It's a luxury. No, it's an addiction for me to do it, really. It really is a kind of addiction. Um, so I'll try to get back to it later after taking a... Well, I take very circuitous routes. <laughs> <laughs>